On December 21st of 2021, I was diagnosed with stage three breast cancer. Here for my MRI this morning, 7.30. Since then, we have gone through one full round of IVF. <laughs> <laughs> she says I have a very photogenic uterus. And secured ourselves five beautiful baby embryos. And we've most recently completed five months of chemotherapy. <laughs> Unfortunately, my treatment plan is far from over, and this week I will be preparing to head back in for surgery. It's been six weeks since I've picked up this camera and shared about the cancer journey with all of you. I guess I thought that once I was done chemo, I was going to feel immediately better. That was not the case. But as of today, I'm feeling quite strong, although in two days' time we go back in for surgery. Back in November, I went in for a lumpectomy to remove the mass that was seen on imaging, such as my MRI. So whenever you remove something that is cancerous, you wanna make sure that you take enough of like a padding, let's call it, that has clear, healthy cells so you know you've gotten all the cancer possible. My margins were overwhelmingly not clear. So here we are making a very big decision about what to do next. Somewhere along the way, between the day of my diagnosis, meeting with plastic surgeons, and then just the way my oncologist was speaking to me, I fell under the impression that I would need a mastectomy on my right breast. And in that case, they were highly recommending I just go for a full removal of both breasts with immediate reconstruction. About 10 days after chemotherapy finished, I went back into the hospital for another MRI. So the second part of my journey begins today. I'm here for an MRI to help my surgeons get a better understanding of my tissue and what's currently going on in both breasts as well as my lymph nodes. Oh, this is my second MRI in my life, so I'm a little less anxious. And at the time, I understood that the MRI would only really show the scar tissue and the site of incision from my first surgery, but that it would help with surgical planning. All done. I was super surprised when Eamon and I went in to meet with my surgeon a few weeks ago, and he presented the option of going for another lumpectomy, and of course, the option of the mastectomy as well. Big meeting, big meeting with the doc. So you don't have um, the super high risk genes that we know will likely lead to recurrent cancer down the road to the bronchial. Yahoo, that's <laughs> right? something to celebrate. You know, because you're so young and you um, developed the cancer, obviously the concern at the beginning was that you had some kind of genetic condition. Right. Uh -huh. So that may have been why there was sure. a lot of talk of bilateral mastectomies, which yeah. is what we recommend in that situation. Okay, how are you feeling? Oh, uh, that was a little confusing, but, um... So, mm -hmm. why did you get a breast cancer? Well, you obviously had a mutation, but it was in the cells that mutated only. It's not something you're carrying right. that is of significance. Right. It's... It's a lot. I well, just, it is. Yeah. Absolutely. It is what you guys need to feel comfortable with. You know, yeah. it doesn't matter what... We can guide you when we know what the odds are. So, it's really a matter of what, what you're, what's going to make you sleep best at night. I look like an old man. <laughs> a cute old man. I came in here today very much thinking I was going to be instructed about a double mastectomy and that was my only option and it's not. So we're gonna go home and take a few days to think about it. I'm so glad you were here. Mm. I would be so overwhelmed if I had all this information mm. without you and I was trying to relay it and Okay. Yeah, we'll figure it out. I actually left the doctor's office crying that day and I feel very emotional about it still because my cancer diagnosis and this journey has been so all over the place that sometimes I feel misdiagnosed or I've just received information that didn't really add up. So while I'm in the room and while Eamon's in that room with me, it's hard to retain all of the information and we walked away feeling a bit confused as to why I had this option all of a sudden and why there was no significant difference in recurrence rate. Oh. <laughs> I don't, I, but I don't know. I feel a little confused, so yeah. No, no, I know, I know. Yeah, you know, that's, this is all normal. These emotions are all normal. Yeah. Okay, you're just going through a normal 
process. Of yeah. Stuff. It's, it feels scary to make the decision on my own because I don't want to make the wrong decision, you know? This was basically my brain while I was trying to make this decision. And the most important thing that Eamon and I had to focus on, and we called my oncologist to confirm and recalled the surgeon to confirm, is that whether I choose option A, which is a lumpectomy and I'll need radiation for sure, or the mastectomy, which is the full removal of my breast, my recurrence rate and chance of getting breast cancer again is 10%. The outcomes are based on evidence, yeah. whether we take the breast out or whether we take the lump and radiate the rest of the breast. Okay, okay. If we do what we call a partial mastectomy and save the breast and then give radiation, the recurrence rate for that is just over 10%. If we do a mastectomy, then we always run the risk of leaving a little bit of breast tissue under the skin because you have to leave some fat along the skin or the skin will die mm. and that's where the recurrence occurs and the recurrence rate for that is just around 10 percent so they are very close they are not significantly different oh i've just been on such a road with this diagnosis i had it i didn't have it i had it again oh it was really aggressive i was told by the surgeon everything looked good and then it didn't look good and it just felt like are we sure this is true? Are we sure that the lumpectomy will give me as good of chances of living a happy, healthy life as a mastectomy? But then when I really sat with it, the option that I wanted to pursue felt very clear to me. Okay, you're on speaker with myself and Eamon. So, have you been able to make a decision? I feel like my gut and my heart says try the lumpectomy. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So what we're doing is just going in and mobbing up, cleaning up, and making sure everything's good. Okay, good. All right? Yeah, feels good. Okay. Bye, guys. Thanks, Thanks Doc. Dr. Engel. Good luck with the greenhouse. Thanks. Cheers. Bye. Bye. I feel really good about that. Me too, that. baby. That's great. It's mm -hmm. really good news. Mm -hmm. It is really good news. That's great. <laughs> Thanks for being here for me. I'm always here, buddy. I never loved the idea of reconstruction. I never wanted implants in my body, but I also really struggled with the idea of being flat chested. Even though I'm, you know, small breasted to begin with, I just felt like, oh, here goes another piece of femininity that I have to lose. To summarize, in two days time, I'm having a lumpectomy. While I don't have a lump anymore, a lumpectomy is just another word for a partial mastectomy. And we will be sampling my lymph nodes. The lymph nodes are under your armpit and it's the first place that breast cancer spreads to. My MRI shows no enlargement and there's no cause for concern, but it's a part of breast cancer care and we need to make sure that there's no microscopic cancer cells spreading into my lymph nodes. That will probably determine future treatment plans. Warning! Just thought I'd show you a quick morning routine. Basically, I wake up every day and I ask Eamon, how are my eyebrows? How's my hair? She's really coming in. A little bit of gray there, but apparently that's pretty normal with regrowth and then it'll regrow out brown. Um, my eyebrows, which was so upsetting, I lost just a few weeks ago completely, but they seem to be coming back in. And even I have little eyelashes. So I have this natural brow serum and that's supposed to help promote thick regrowth. I actually put some of this brow serum in my hair as well, just because if it can promote thick hair growth there, and of course, the hair regrowth happened all over the body. I actually got it on the legs and everywhere you don't want it before eyebrows and head. So, isn't that dandy? Mm -hmm. beautiful. Thank you, boo. And what goes with breakfast these days? Drugs. <laughs> I'd been meeting tamoxifen with a lot of resistance. It's a estrogen suppressing drug um, that I have to be on for five to 10 years. See, I just said it like I have to be, but the truth is I get to be, and it's going to stop my cancer reoccurring. So it's a miracle drug. But my cancer's biology is estrogen positive, meaning estrogen feeds my cancer cells. So this, no estrogen equals no cancer. Right, buddy? That's right. Thanks for breakfast. You gotta take it with food, so. 
We're headed into town. Oh, thanks for the compliments, guys. Hello. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Meet Raymond. Why Raymond? Because it's half Rebecca's hair, half Eamon's hair. Oh, love it. <laughs> this wig was just recently cut, styled, and brought to Eamon's brother's wedding where I officiated. Ding. It's a cute pic of you guys right here. Thank you. Let's roll, Raymond. Let's roll. We came into town because the hospital still requires a PCR test before surgery. I respect it. I respect it. Bye, buddy. Hey there. Hey, good morning. Appointment for 11 o'clock? Yeah. Probably start late. Yeah, okay, thanks. It's all done, baby. That was quick. Quick. Swab. Cheek, cheek now. Nostril, nostril. And you're out of there. Groceries. Let's do it. Good morning. It's Monday, day before surgery. And lucky for me, since making the decision to have my lumpectomy, I don't think my headspace has been too bogged down with all of the what ifs of surgery until the last night. So I had one of those sleeps. I'm up early thinking about it. I think Osa knows something's up too. He gave me so many kisses this morning. Somebody's shitting. Somebody's shitting. Is your dad awake? A bear! <laughs> The absolute best thing I have done on this journey is invest the time into my mental health. Once a week, I come into this room and from the comfort of our bed, I speak with my therapist. Sometimes that looks like me crying for an hour and going through a box of Kleenex. Other times we can get into the tools I need to climb this mountain in front of me. Either way, I know that at the end of my session, I always, always feel better. And while I've always been an advocate for mental health, I feel like I can't help but scream it from the rooftops now. So I reached out to BetterHelp to sponsor today's video and share their services with all of you. BetterHelp has helped over 2 million people live happier, healthier lives. And it all begins with assessing your needs and matching you with a licensed therapist. You can start communicating within 48 hours and the services are available worldwide. So like me, you can do your therapy sessions from the comfort of your own room. BetterHelp is also more affordable than traditional therapy and financial aid is available. For the Eamon and Beck community, BetterHelp is offering 10% off your first month when you visit betterhelp.com slash Eamon and Beck. That's betterhelp.com slash Eamon and Beck. I seriously cannot recommend therapy enough to anyone going through anything, just life. <laughs> so be sure to check out BetterHelp. KGH Hospital for 8 a.m. tomorrow. Exactly, yeah. And then I'm going to head over to you guys for 12 noon at Hotel Dew, and then my surgery's yeah. at 2 p.m. <sighs> Just finished a Peloton workout. Getting it in before I for you. go under. Yeah, so that's good. Tomorrow, surgery at 2. All right. <sighs> mm-hmm. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Like usual, wow. just the way you like it. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. My mom and dad are here to watch Oso today. <laughs> Thanks, mom and dad. I'm gonna cry just seeing you in frame. I love you guys. And then Oso Bear, you're gonna be good for grandma and grandpa or what? Yes. <laughs> oh, you don't know. I love you. I love you. My mindset has been very much, I don't wanna go for surgery. I don't wanna go for surgery. I'm just starting to feel good. I don't wanna go for surgery. Makes sense. Ah, but this morning we're gonna change it to, I'm really grateful for modern I get medicine. To go for surgery. Well, I'm struggling with the, I get to go for surgery, but something along those lines. Okay, let's go have surgery. Love you, bud. Love you, boy. Little local traffic this morning. Excuse me, sir. Um. Wabbit. Mr. Bunny? What you looking at? Oh. Cute. College and I'm still in. Still see, can't get it out of my mind. Okay, 8 a.m. We're at Kingston General Hospital for a dye that will help them detect which lymph nodes to sample this afternoon. So the dye has to be in your system for a few hours, so. Bye, everyone. I can help. 
Oh, I'm here to get um, a dye for surgery. Okay. All good to go. So you want to head down this hallway? Yeah. And you take your left, and you want to take the black elevators off to the second floor. I'm sure Becca's already explained all this, but I am feeling very grateful this morning that she has the option to just do the single lumpectomy. We're fingers crossed today that we're going to get good news. Everything's going to be fine. I feel it in my soul that it is going to be good. And she's, she's such a powerful woman. So proud of her. Oh my god, that was quick. I, that was horrendous. I've never uh. screamed before. I had no idea what to expect, but they basically put an injection twice right by your nipple. Oh, oh I hated it. It's over. It's over now? It's over now. And normally I'm like the type of patient who doesn't say anything and I was literally like, oh, <laughs> it hurt. It hurt. That was probably the worst part of the day. But... That's what I said to her. I was like, was that, is that the worst part of the day? She just looked at me, so. You guys here for an appointment? Yeah. Yes. Alright, so just over here, I'll get you a new Yeah. Thank you. So, Eamon, unfortunately, is not allowed to come into the prep room with me like he was with my last surgery here. I guess COVID is quite high risk now. So, this is the last time I get to see you. We're just waiting for my little buzzer to go off, and once it does, I'll go and get my scrubs on, and away she goes. You're gonna do it for anybody. Mask is. I'm just in a, another waiting room now. We've got my IV all hooked up. You would think that after all of the chemo, I'd be great with needles, but I'm still very, very squirmish. My body still sweats like a pig every time. Feeling no different, really. Just still a little anxious, to be honest, but we got this. See you on the other side. Hello, friends. Um, if I'm being totally honest, I'm getting a little nervous. She was supposed to be kind of done around 3.15. It's now 4.15, so I'm gonna go ask the nurse if they know anything. Hi. Yeah, no problem. I was told around 3.15, so I was just getting a little worried, so. Okay. Okay. Just wait. Yep, okay, so I'll just hang tight. Thanks a lot. Hi, buddy. Hi, baby. I was so worried about you. Oh, I'm sorry to worry you. It's okay. How are you doing? I think I was really sleepy. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm doing better now. Sounds like like everything went well. Good. Okay, yeah. Great. Good. Yeah. I remember just being like so out of it, but wanting to know how it went, and being like, "How did it go?" <laughs> yeah. Like screaming. Oh wow! Yeah, that sounds great. Hi, bud. Hi, Mr. Boy. Hi. Oh. Hi. Hi. That was the best welcome home. Yuck. my body. The pain is mostly in my armpit, which is totally different from the last time. Mm. Is the blue stuff the dye? Yeah. I just oh, wow. peed blue, too. You peed blue, too? Yeah, I was like, whoa, my pee. The dye's all up in you, yeah? <laughs> Hi, bear. Come on up, buddy. Oh, there's my buddy. Hi, Oso. I love you, Oso. Okay, I'll check in with you guys tomorrow. Okay. Hi, bestie. Hi, monkey. It's my birthday. Happy birthday. I'm so grateful to have another year of life. should be celebrated especially as you get older I feel like society is like anti-birthday when you get old but like what a gift it is to turn 32 so for Becca's birthday <laughs> what have you decided Jerry what's her gift our gift our gift for Becca is to fix up these gardens which are mostly weeds right now we're gonna make it beautiful for Becca I can't wait yay you just direct from the bedroom baby <laughs> So these have never had a lot of love, and that's all about to change. Dun dun dun, dun the grand reveal! <laughs>
Thank you guys so much. This is the best, best birthday present. Look at how good this looks. Oh, so you want to go for a walk? Come on, buddy. Let's go. Let's go for a walk. Also, come. It's been a whole week since my surgery, and I'm feeling pretty all right. You're looking pretty all right. And I'm finding the biggest difference between surgery in November and now is that because we did my lymph nodes and I have the two stitches and I I don't know, the pain in my armpit Yeah, because they, they went up in there. Yeah, and, and they removed a bunch of stuff. Yeah. So I find that like to be the toughest. And then in the last day, I've really been feeling a lot of breast pain, but nothing, nothing is as bad as chemotherapy, let me tell you. I'm grateful for the energy to go for a walk every single day, even when it's raining. Like last time, the pathology results won't be in for another two weeks, so that's three weeks after the operation, and it leaves your mind to wander a little bit. Most days, I'm feeling very positive and very hopeful for really clear and good results. And then, of course, because of my history and what happened last time, I guess I think of the what ifs, and then I spiral a little bit. But Eamon always says, no use worrying about it. Oh, so come. <laughs> Good yes. boy. Oh, what? Come here, Os. Oh, Os. He's Sorry. taking a poop. <laughs> Continue. Basically, there's no sense worrying about something if you don't know if it's going to happen because then you've just gone through the pain of it twice. So we're just keeping active, keeping focused on healing and recovery, and, you know, the results will be what the results will be. He used a little chopstick action to get that in the woods. He's usually pretty good about going inside. Gross. <laughs> we were just sitting watching a movie and Beck start, has been complaining all day about this kind of feeling like there's a lump underneath her armpit and she's just kind of starting to see that there is like a bit of a buildup. Underneath my armpit is really swollen and it feels like it's full of fluid. Yeah, it's a little raised. If you want to go downtown, we go downtown right now. I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't know if I'm overreacting or not. I just don't know. How are you supposed to know? I feel like all day I've felt like off and like, mm -hmm. like I do. My body tells me these things and mm -hmm. I just have been like trying to push through because I want to be like strong and like I'm over it and stuff. And then my body does like, you know, um, I googled it and it sounds like it's maybe a lymphedema or something and it was basically like, like, talk to somebody straight away. It's like 11 o'clock and we live in the middle of nowhere and it's like, I don't want to overreact, but I don't want to underreact, you know? Hi, baby. <laughs> it feels like it's like this big under my armpit and kind of growing. There's definitely like a, a, a little lump going on there. Yeah. Your call may be recorded for quality and coaching purposes. Hello. Oh, hi, Iman. This is Debbie. I'm one of the nurses here at CarePath. Hi, Debbie. How are you? The lymph fluid has kind of pooled in that area. Mm -hmm. We do see this happen sometimes. Because I don't see any signs or symptoms of an infection, that would include any redness, mm -hmm. um, warmth to touch, um, uh, you know, or pain and fever, of course. Um, so you don't have any of those symptoms at this point. So I won't send you to emerge. I okay. don't think you really want to be in emerge tonight. No. But I do want you to contact uh, this Dr. Engel's office tomorrow morning. It's all good. It's all okay. Okay. And we're here for you. Thank you call you. us back if you need us. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. Appreciate okay. it. Thank you very much. Yeah. Have a nice night. Okay. Bye bye. You too. Bye bye. bye. We call the doc in the morning. I don't feel much change in my armpit area, if anything. Uh, maybe a little bit more swollen, so we're gonna try calling the doctor directly this morning. Okay. Okay, so small movement and maybe a little ice pack and elevation. 
To summarize, Michelle thinks we need to just monitor everything, make sure that there's no signs of infection, that it's not getting too much worse, and that hopefully it will drain on its own. When you use a needle to drain it, it runs the risk of adding infection to the site. So I don't think that they jump to that straight away. Hello, my boy. My boy's been so sweet with me today. He knows mommy's a little nervous. Honey, honey, what's happening? <laughs> They say dogs can feel your energy. <laughs> ah. I love you. Hello, Rebecca speaking. Hi there, it's Dr. Folkson calling from the Cancer Center. So it sounds as though things have been going really well. Oh, oh, you can make me cry. <laughs> so there were five lymph nodes in the sample that were all negative. Oh my gosh, that's wonderful. That's Great so news. wonderful. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> So this is all predictive of a, of a good outcome. Yes, oh, Dr. Dr. Folkson coming <laughs> through with the good news. Do you have, so, do you have the results of the, um, of the pathology biopsy? then? So d d did the tumor, did we get clear margins this time? There was no tumor. Oh Nothing. my God. Um, no residual invasive carcinoma, no precancerous changes, but no evidence of any disease there. I can't even tell you how relieved I feel. Thank you so much. I suppose you haven't had your pathology report yet. No, no, no. Okay, so I'm getting ahead of everything. I love it. Yeah, it's I'm all so, good. I'm so happy. Right, so I now just need to put the cherry on top and that's the radiation. Radiation is not something to be afraid of. It's going to be four weeks of radiation. The main side effect is perhaps some redness of the skin and perhaps a bit of fatigue, and that's about it. Okay. Nothing nothing yeah, kicks you down double. like chemo, you know? So I feel like uh, I'm ready to tackle just about anything. Well, people say that the hardest part of the radiation is finding parking. <laughs> <laughs> See you then. Thank you, Doc. Okay, then. Right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> oh, buddy. I'm so proud of you. Oh, I'm so relieved. Best day ever. I just want to sit here and like soak it in. Like it just doesn't feel real. Like it still feels scary to like let myself like relax about it, you know? Relax, buddy. Dr. Falkson doesn't seem like a jokester. <laughs> We should call some people and tell them. Yeah, right? let's call people and tell them. What are you gonna say? I don't know yet. <laughs> hey, mom. Hey, what's wrong? No, no, it's happy. I just had my call with the radiologist, and there was no cancer found in my surgery. Oh my god! Oh my god! That's so good. Oh man! Oh my god! I'm gonna cry. <laughs> <laughs> Chemo worked. Yeah. hard to put into words how I'm feeling in this moment but a big word that keeps coming up is light I feel so much lighter like my shoulders just dropped from being up here for the last six months my oncologist as well as my other doctors had prepared me that the lumpectomy might not be enough that I'd need multiple surgeries that the pathology might come back um, and not be so positive and that I need more chemotherapy or that radiation could be a lot longer of a treatment plan and so to know that all I have in front of me now is 20 rounds of radiation is like <sighs> I honestly don't know what to do with myself I'm genuinely sitting here like do I take a nap or do I try to run a marathon because I'm so light <laughs> I could go either way Thank you guys for being a part of it. Oh my goodness. 
I'm not even as concerned about the lump under my arm. Like, of course I'm monitoring it and it's still very much there, but I just don't feel that concerned because it's, yeah, we're gonna be okay. We're gonna be okay. <laughs> I need more tissues. <laughs>